Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is Apostle Only Love Chica Austin of Prophetic Whirlwind Ministries. And I'm just going to ask if you're not speaking to just be on mute. And so greetings to everyone. Happy new month of AR. Um, we want to also greet those who are on YouTube. Shalom, shalom, and thank you to the moderators, Reagan and Kala and Asheria and Katia. Shalom, shalom, and happy new month. I want to give a special thanks to Bet Ephraim, Great Awakening, Travailing Family Fellowship, and um, Pinnacle Worship Assembly, and all the assemblies that are with us tonight. And we have a special night um, tonight. It is one of the main themes of AR, Ziv, aka Ziv in Hebrew, is healing. And before I even remembered that um, from the information I have about this month, I felt led to ask Pastor Renice Kirkland of Pin Pinnacle Worship Assembly to share about healing as worship to Yah. So everything is in perfect alignment and we are just grateful for another month in Yah. And so can we just have the trumpets sound? Can we just have the trumpets blown as we praise Abba Yahweh? We praise you, Abba Yahweh. Hallelujah. Can we just unmute and give him some praise? The moon was sighted in Israel. We are a month. Hallelujah. We praise you, Abba Yahweh. We magnify you and we glorify you. Abba Yahweh, we come to you in the name, the righteousness and authority of Yahshua HaMashiach. We come to you asking that you forgive myself, everyone who is a part of this service in Zoom, on YouTube, anyone who is coming, forgive us, our family and our ancestors of our sins and our iniquities and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Abba Yah, we come to you. We glorify you. We lift you up for bringing us to the month of Ziv, 5782, the month of AR, 5782. Abba Yahweh, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask 
ask that you ingather the exiles and return us to our land. Abba Yahweh, we ask in this month of healing and wisdom that you give us the wisdom to know what we need to heal from, to know how we need to heal, and in the power of your Ruach HaKodesh, to heal as we're counting the omer leading up to shavuot we thank you for your torah and we thank you for your ruach hakodesh which give us the power to keep the torah abba yahweh we consecrate the ar 5782 to you we consecrate this month to you abba yahweh we set intentions for success and prosperity and healing this month and each day as we count the omer Please, Abba Yahweh, make the fruit of the Ruach, love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, patience, self-control, all the fruits of the Ruach, more evidence in our lives, on our jobs, in our homes, with our friends, in our communities. Abba Yahweh, we just say hallelujah, 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 and we, Abba Yahweh, confess this we, we consecrate this month to you abba yahweh job 22 28 says you shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways ar is a month where the light is shining brighter and brighter we are out of the captivity of egypt but we still don't have your torah we are uh, we have seen the messiah Yahshua, but we still don't have your Ruach HaKodesh. This is what we're counting towards, your Ruach and your Torah. And so Abba Yahweh, even though we may consider ourselves awakened, we still need more understanding of your Torah. Break down every Greco-Roman understanding of your word and give us a Hebraic understanding of your word. Give us a Yah understanding of your word. With the Ruach HaKodesh, give us an increase in wisdom. Abba Yahweh, just ask that you instruct us and teach us in the way that we shall go. Guide our eyes, Father, as the Psalm 32, 8 says. Abba Yahweh, we ask that you give us a spirit where we will not cease praying. Give us a ruach of praise, worship, and prayer. Abba Yahweh, Luke 1, 37 says, with Abba Yah, nothing shall be impossible. And so Abba Yahweh, we are asking Abba Yahweh, if it's your will, that you will end this final captivity. We know that it is your will, Abba Yahweh. We bind every spirit contrary to the spirit of Yahweh, preventing us from enjoying all of our um, privileges, all of our rights, all of our children. We bind every spirit, binding our children's minds from receiving the glorious light of the Basura of you in the name of Yahshua. Yahweh, we pray to you, Abba Yahweh. Let all ruachs of stubbornness, pride, and disrespect flee, Abba Yahweh, from our nation, from our children, from our husbands, our wives, and our children. Abba Yahweh, destroy everything in our children and in ourselves and in our assemblies and in our ministries and in our organizations that are preventing us from doing your will in the name of of Yahshua. Every curse, every evil covenant, and all inherited problems passed down to us from our ancestors, Abba Yahweh. We ask that we be healed of them, that they be canceled, that you heal us at the cellular level, that you give us a blood transfusion, and that you infuse us with your Kodesh blood. Abba Yahweh, we worship you, we praise you, and we ask that this is a month where marriages will come together. We ask that this be a month where children will be born. We ask that this be a month where someone is placed in the right place of employment. We ask that this be the month that someone finds that Kodesh assembly that is safe. We ask that this be the month where our family and friends awaken to the truth of being the Israelites. We ask that this be the month that you fight for us even in the, the high places where the spiritual wickedness reside, even in our state capitals, even in D.C., even in the United Nations, even in the capitals of our nations and the nations we've come from. Abba Yahweh, we set aside our AR. We set aside the month of Ziv to you. Help us to endure as we count the Omer, but help us not to just do it as a ritual, but to do it as an act of healing transformation. Abba Yahweh, anyone under the sound of my voice that needs to be healed physically or mentally or emotionally Abba Yahweh including me let 
this healing come throughout this month. Abba Yahweh, let us not just keep Shavuot like business as usual, but when we get to wherever we're keeping Shavuot, including if you're keep, if people are keeping it online, we ask for your Ruach HaKodesh to empower us, and we ask for a supernatural download that will help us to correctly understand your Torah, not just for those who are listening or on this Zoom, but for all your children of Yasharel scattered to the four corners of the earth. We ask that you bless our leaders who are teaching the truth, especially those in Christianity. We ask, Father Yahweh, that you give them encouragement, that you give them courage, and that you put a protective hedge around our homes. Abba Yahweh, we thank you for this new month. It's only with you putting the air in our lungs, as my elder Richard says, that we are enduring. So we thank you for this month this service to you. We ask that you, Yahweh, have your way. Let the Ruach HaKodesh be here tonight. Let me decrease and you increase. Anoint all the teachers, those leading praise and worship, those moderating, those reading, and Abba Yahweh, we will never think it robbery to say, Torah Yah, Torah Yah, Torah Yah. We ask all these things in the name, righteousness, and authority of Yahshua HaMashiach to you, Yah. Amen, and so be it. Amen. Amen. And can we just unmute and say Toda Yah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda Yah. Toda Yah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Abba. Hallelujah. Some praise and just thank him because there's many who did not see AR 5782. So again, I want to welcome everyone who is here, all the assemblies. Bed Ephraim, Trevailing Family Fellowship, Pinnacle Worship Assembly. We want to thank everybody on Zoom and remind the family on Zoom to like and share and subscribe. We just are grateful for another month. And so I want to just ask our trumpet blowers to get ready again. Um, if our trumpet blowers can get ready again, we're going to ask you to do that. Because we do want to, again, blow the trumpet as we are commanded in, um, by the scriptures. And we want to thank and of Kingdom Kai and Mother Hazel um, for being uh, with us to blow the trumpet month in and month out. We want to thank you both for being there to blow the trumpet. We appreciate you. And we want to just um, report. Um, we just want to report that the new moon was shown. So hold on, everyone. So the new moon was sighted this evening in Israel. Israel is seven hours ahead of us on Monday, May 22nd. And it was, um, we have this sighting from When is the New Moon, which is a website that you can go to to check the new moon. And it was cited at 7.38 p.m. Israel time, which would be about 12.38 um, U.S. time, at least in New York City. And so we thank Abba Yahweh that we are in a new month. Please let us know when the sun goes down if you can see the new moon near you. And um, just look to the western sky and see if you can see it. I live in the city, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to see the new moon. But if you can see it when the sun goes down at about 745, let us know. But we are officially in the month of Ziv. 5782, the month of AR 5782. And so I want to ask um, Moray Kabadia and Mother Hazel to just unmute and blow the shofar. And if you want to unmute and praise the Most High, feel free to. Yeah, hallelujah. 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 And so we thank um, our trumpet blowers. If you are shofar blowers, if you want to support them, please do at these 
websites above and we just ask the moderators to start thank you so much Kala um, um, you can see the links in your chat on YouTube or Zoom or right up here if you want to sow a Rosh Kodesh seed into them but we are grateful to our shofar blowers and now I'm going to ask our elder More Nana Michael Laws of Bed Ephraim Great Awakening to um, just come forward and read the scriptures for us and we appreciate you Nana and we appreciate Dr. Sandra Laws and happy new month to you. Erev Tov Mishpacha. Uh, the scripture is found in uh, Bemidbar Numbers chapter 10 verse number 10 and it reads thusly. Also in the day of your gladness, in your appointed feast, and at the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpet over your burnt offering, over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be a memorial for you before your Elohim. I am Yahweh your Elohim. And uh, Numbers Bemidbar chapter 28, verse number 11. At the beginnings of your month, you shall present a birth offering to Yahweh, two young bulls, one ram, and seven lambs in their first year without blemish. And finally, on Exodus chapter 15, verse number 26, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, if you diligently heed the voice of Yahweh your Elohim and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh your Elohim who heals you. I need Yahweh Rapha. Thus is the reading. Thank you so much, Nana Laws. We appreciate you. And thank you for throwing that Hebrew in there. We appreciate you. And this, Yah is our healer. He is our healer family. And so we, we have to know that and walk confidently in that. If you want to fellowship with Bet Ephraim, please see their Facebook page. Please also, if you want to donate to our elder who does the reading, please see his donation um, link here or in the chat below. And we um, thank you. And now we're going to ask um, Psalmist Latanya White to come forward and lead us in the Shema. And um, should I find Latanya on her own Zoom or should I um, find her on your Zoom, Moray Amari. Hi, sis. Hey. How are you? I'm here. I believe this is Malcolm's. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. This is Malcolm's. <laughs> All right. Um, so, just to share your screen, I'm going to share the audio on my computer. Okay. So, you want to share the screen? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me make you a co-host and stop my share. Okay, now, sis, you can share your screen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, can you hear the music? Yes, we can. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Shama Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim, Yaha. Shama Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim. Shama Israel, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah Israel, 
Hallelujah. We thank you, Latanya, and we thank you, your husband, Omari of Biblical Man Cave. And we just thank you for leading us and praising Yah as we remind you Shema means to to listen, not just hear, because you can hear and it can go in one ear and out the other. But when you listen, you really, um, you know, you end up eternalizing um, what you hear. And so we want to make sure that um, we just want to make sure that we all are listening to the voice of Yah. And so we really thank you for singing that song of praise. We really, really pray, thank you um, for just worshiping Abba Yahweh. And so if you want to sow into Miss Latanya White, you can do so at the link on your screen or you can do so at the um, link in your chat. And just remember that Yah is always speaking. He is always speaking. It's just are we hearing or are we listening? And I meant Shema means to hear. So if you hear, you can internalize what is being said. But if you're just listening, that is when it can go in one ear and out the other. So forgive me for that. But thank you so much, Latanya. Thank you um, to Malcolm as well. And bless your little daughter, my little friend. And welcome to everyone who is joining us. This is Prophetic Whirlwind Ministries. Rosh Kodesh online worship for the month of AR, which is also Ziv in Hebrew. And we want to wish you a happy new month because the new moon was sighted about seven hours ago or um, little about six and a half hours ago in Israel. And we thank you for being with us and worshiping with us. So if you are listening, if you're in the Zoom room or listening on YouTube, drop in the chat where you are from. Um, you know, your city and state or your country, if you're outside of America, just drop in the chat where you are from. And so we are going to read our boundary stones, which are our community agreements. 
and um, the boundary stones were are adopted from the new moon boundary stones document by Keisha Gallagher of Grace and Torah. And the first boundary stone is we respect the home of the host or hostess. Likewise, we treat everyone with respect. We come together in modesty and humility. Equity is being fair or impartial. If Yah is not a respecter of persons, then neither should we be. We recognize that we are all equal before Yah and that every person has a unique gift and talent in which they can bless the group. We do not shun or shame anyone as this is wickedness. We come together with a spirit of expectation and a heart prepared by prayer. We do not seek to promote ourselves or our personal convictions. We love everyone right where they are. We recognize diversity within the body and biblical beliefs as we grow in Messiah, knowing that no one has arrived. Order is imperative at Rosh Kodesh gatherings. We desire for the Ruach HaKodesh to flow freely through each member, but also to remain orderly and honest, as 1 Corinthians 14.40 tells us. We avoid even the appearance of evil, such as gossip, slander, malice, control, and manipulation. None of these are welcome here. We have an open door. Our door is open, but it is guarded by wise gatekeepers to keep those inside safe. We agree to leave selfish agendas at the door and to minister to the suffering and the hurting. And then finally, naked. Because we are vulnerable before Abba Yahweh and each other at our Rosh Kodesh gatherings, we ask that um, if something is shared privately in, a, in the chat on Zoom, that confidentiality is kept. And what is shared stays in the group, except, you know, the general info about the months and things like that. We do not reveal another's dirty laundry because we are servants of the Most High Elohim. We keep the nakedness of others covered. If you agree with these Boundary Stone community agreements, we're going to ask you to just unmute and say, I agree if you're on Zoom or put I agree in the chat if you're on YouTube or can't unmute on Zoom. I agree. I, agree. I agree. I agree. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so, so much. And so, um, we appreciate each and every person who is here. And so we're going to just see we have Dallas, Texas in the house. Shalom and Shamna. Welcome. We have Mount Vernon, New York, one of our moderators, Asheria Abadya. We have Sister Taniqua Williams of Gird Up Women's Prayer. Um, she is coming from down south. I know that. And we also have in our chat, we have um, Harlem, New York City. My sister Wanda, I'm in Harlem as well. We have Concord, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where my little brother lives. Um, greetings to you, Apostle Regina and Maura Tanya Owens. Greetings to you, Chris, my college friend in Pittsburgh. Greetings to Yemi in Houston, Texas. Greetings to Lisa in Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina is really in the house today. Fayetteville, North Carolina with Maura, Christina. Um, that's where my grandmother is from. And then Ima Hadessa from the Bahamas. Thank you for joining us. Sister Anita, great to see you again from Maryland. And we have Southfield, Michigan with Sonia. Great greetings to you. We have Kala. Thank you for helping you and Reagan for helping to moderate the Zoom chat. And I know the whites are in Connecticut. Uh, Maury Atawame is in Michigan unless he's traveling. I know the laws are also in Michigan. So we are grateful for everyone who is on and we welcome you to this new month. So for those who may be new to Rosh Kodesh or to this gathering, Rosh Kodesh means head of the month, new month or new moon in Hebrew. The biblical calendar, like many Eastern calendars, such as the calendar in Islam, the Indian calendar, um, Asian calendars, is lunar based. Um, it was the Western newer calendars that became sun based. Rosh Kodesh is a Moedim, is an appointment with Yah. It is one of the set apart times with Yah, with Abba Yah, where he is always listening, always willing to commune with us. But during these times of Sabbath and Rosh Kodesh and holy days and feast days, he's especially listening to 
um, commune with us to answer our prayers. And we celebrate Rosh Kodesh by blowing the trumpet, prayers, praise, worship, studying scripture. You can have, um, you can take Rosh Kodesh prayer requests. You can have Rosh Kodesh dinners, but we celebrate in these different ways. Just note that in our gatherings, we use the Hebrew sacred name for God, such as Yah, Yahweh, or Yahuwah, and the Hebrew sacred names for Yahshua, whom the world calls Jesus, or Jesus Christ, such as Yahshua, Hamashiach, or Yehoshua, or the Aramaic name, Yeshua. But we are talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we are talking about the Messiah of Scripture. So when we look at this month of Rosh Kodesh, or um, Rosh Kodesh AR, that is today. But when we look at the month of AR, just notice sometimes it will be spelled with two Ys, but in Hebrew, it is Ziv. And welcome to our sister um, that's repping Trinidad. Welcome to our family from Albany, New York. And yes, Tanika, you're in North Carolina. Welcome, Brother Brian from Harlem. Um, and so Ziv is the name, way you say the month in Hebrew. Now, um, the reason why many of the Hebrew monks today have names from, Bab from Babylon is the sages say, those are just the older people, the OGs that know a lot of Torah, that um, these names change during the Babylonian captivity from Hebrew to Babylonian. And they're not going to change the names back until we are back in the kingdom so that every month we are reminded of the sins of our ancestors that led us to the Babylonian captivity. But if you want, you can call this month Ziv. Um, AR is the eighth month of the civil year, which starts on the first of Tishri, um, most likely known as Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah. And it's the second month of the Hebrew spiritual calendar, which starts on the first of Abib, also known as Nisan. So we are in the second month of the Hebraic new year. Um, this month has 29 days and it usually falls in April or May on the Gregorian calendar. Um, remember before the Babylonian captivity, this month was called Ziv and we see that in 1 Kings 6, 1, 1 Kings 6, 37. And Ziv is a Hebrew word that means light or glow, light or glow. And so one of the themes of this month is healing. And when you see someone who is healed, it's almost like their continence is glowing. But also we know that Yahshua is the light of the world and that as people filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, wherever we go, light should come into that place without us even having to say um, a word. And so in the Babylonian calendar, this month is named Ara or Aru, which can be also translated as a month of blossoming. So this is a spring month. So that makes a lot of sense. But let's go into some of the themes of this month. So again, this is the second month of the spiritual calendar for Israel. Ancient Israel did have a civil calendar for the Jubilee year, for the Sabbath year. Um, for accounting purposes, also a new year for the trees and a new year for the animals for the tithing purposes. But right now we just mostly follow first of Abib and Rosh Hashanah. The tribe associated with this month is Issachar. The main theme of this month is healing. It's a month to understand secrets. It's a month of natural healing. And it's also a month to contemplate numbers, whether they come by a dream, a vision, or divine revelation. It's also a month about looking and observing to find a place of strength. And the stone associated with this month is lapis. And the scripture for this month is Exodus 15:26. And do we have a volunteer who can read that scripture again? I know it was read earlier, but can we read that scripture again? Exodus 15:26. You can raise your hand and unmute on Zoom to just read that scripture and anyone can volunteer. Okay. I can read it. Oh, okay. Um, I saw Prophetess. Is it okay if Chris reads since you will be praying a couple of times tonight? That's fine. That's fine. I was just didn't hit see anybody. That's fine. Thank you so much, Prophetess. And Chris, can you read for us? Sure. And the translation of, of God's name in this one, can you help me out with that, Apostle? 
Yes, you can say Yahweh in this one or the um, Almighty. Got it. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of Yahweh and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh who heals you. Thank you so much, Chris, and greetings to little Isaiah and your wife. And, you know, it is Yahweh who heals us, Yehovah Rapha, Yahweh who sees and heals. And so in the plagues of Egypt, there were plagues of boils and diseases and diseases associated with Egypt. There are diseases associated with captivity, mental diseases, what they call madness or growing faint physical diseases such as high blood pressure and stress-related autoimmune diseases. This is not to make anyone feel guilty, but to remind us that there is a physical and mental toll that captivity takes. And so when we think about the liberation of Yah, he is also willing to heal us, not just spiritually, but mentally and physically. He is the one that heals. Even if it's through a doctor or a counselor, Yah has still given that person the gift and the ability to be in that role. So the wisdom for this month is again, AR Ziv is a month of healing. And AR is an acronym in Hebrew for I am Yah, your healer. If you break down the Hebraic letters in AR, you will get the sentence, I am Yah, your healer. Can we put that in the chat? I am Yah, your healer. I, or I am Yahweh, your healer. Can we put that in the chat? I am Yah, your healer. When he reveals himself to Moses, he says, I am that I am. But he is also, the I am that he is, is also Yahweh, the healer. And so wisdom is attained more easily this month than any other month. Because in order to obtain wisdom, which starts with the fear of Yah, you must be healed. See, many are going about trying to get wisdom and get the secret things, but they're not healed. They're not healed mentally. Even if you have physical issues, it can sometimes cloud your judgment. What happens when you try to obtain wisdom before you obtain healing? So I'm going to ask, what happens when you obtain wisdom or you try to obtain wisdom before obtaining healing? When you attempt to obtain wisdom before obtaining healing, you will learn stuff. But um, family, can we go on mute? You will learn stuff, but you will never be able to activate the knowledge you're learning. You will know all the curses of Deuteronomy 28, but none of the blessings. You will be clouded when you read scripture or when you hear teachings to automatically go to hatred of other nations, um, low level, low vibrational feelings such as self-righteousness and judgment instead of compassion. Yeah, you do the most. Yeah, uh, um, family, if we can mute, thank you. Thank you so much. If we can mute, I would appreciate that. And so if you try to obtain wisdom before you obtain healing, even the knowledge you gain will be spoiled. And that's why we have so many people that are awake in Hebrews, but something is not clicking. They're not living the abundant life. The blessings of Deuteronomy 28 are not coming on them. We must obtain healing so that the knowledge we get will benefit us and others. So when we think about Abib last month, we were free during this time. But now that we are free, it is time to heal. We are in between the liberation of Passover and the empowerment of Shavuot, which, whom, which some call the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. Think about the Israelites. They got freed in Abib, but now they're wandering in the wilderness. Some want some chicken. Some want to worship a golden calf. Some want to do a rebellion against Moses. Some want to murmur against Moses like his sister. So there's still a healing of the slave mentality that has to happen during the time between Passover and Shavuot. Because if you're not healed and you just get the law of Yah, you just get the Torah of Yah, the first five books, which Shavuot is a celebration 
of getting the Torah. And then, of course, those of us who are messianic, we remember the Shavuot recorded in Acts 2 when the Ruach HaKodesh came into believers. And I always say, the first Shavuot gave us the Torah. The second Shavuot empowered us with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to keep the Torah. But, it, but the fact that the Israelites were freed and not healed is very key to understanding why Ar's key theme is healing. Abib was a month of powerful liberation, both personally and ancestrally. But after years of suffering and struggle in the narrow straits of captivity, Passover doesn't conclude our freedom story. Actually, the freedom from Egypt, the freedom from Babylon, the freedom from chattel slavery is just the beginning. Now that we are physically free, it's time to heal so we can be mentally and spiritually free. So I encourage everyone to talk, um, to look up post-traumatic slave syndrome by Dr. Joy Dugru. She is a social worker specializing in historical trauma. I write about post-traumatic slave syndrome in our in my book because when you read the Exodus and you're like, and you read Leviticus and Numbers, you're like, why are the Israelites asking for chicken when they have manna and quail? Why are they wanting to worship a golden calf when Yah did all this stuff for them so visibly? It's about the healing of the mind and the spirit that is enslaved. And our people are still going through that healing uh, today. When you see the division, when you see colorism, when you see congregations collecting millions of dollars but not you know, helping the community, when we can't work together, when we look down on each other, when we have all these isms and schisms, when you see you know, Dominicans against Haitians or you see Africans against African Americans, all of that is the healing that Israel needs. And that is why they there will be a, a greater exodus again. We're not going to just be taken away back into our land because now we have to heal from captivity. So AR is all about metamorphosizing into the most boldest, radiant self that you have waiting for you inside. And maybe you're not sure that you have a bold part. Maybe you're not sure that you have a radiant part. Maybe you're not sure that you have a healed part, but when we think about the fact that we are seated with Yahshua in heavenly places, we do have all of this. Deuteronomy 28 says in the beginning, if in your captivity you remember and turn, all of these blessings will come upon you. And so you have to remember that healing is the children's bread. But here's the thing, we're not going to become our most spiritually empowered, emboldened upholders of justice and Torah without investment in our self-healing. We have to remember that Yah does, has given us free will. He gave Adam and Eve dominion here. So it's not, Hebraic thought is not that faith is what you think or believe, it's actually what you do. We depend on the Ruach, we depend on the word, we depend on community, not so we can wait to be just magically healed or magically whisked away, but we have these tools so that we can take the steps we need to take to get the healing. Remember, Yahshua asked people, do you want to be made whole? The man that was at the pool, that, you know, the water would, he told Yahshua the water would be troubled and I can't get there in time. And Yahshua would, do you want to be made whole? He would tell others, take up your mat and walk. Why? Because Yah will never violate your free will to heal you or deliver you. And I don't care how anointed the person is that's praying for you. I don't care how many people, um, the person laying hands on you healed. If something inside of you, even a mustard seed of faith, does not want to be free, if you are not willing to take some action, even if it's just getting up off of your mat, you will not be healed. And 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we are the sons of Elohim. And it does not appear yet what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So no, what we shall be is not yet known. It hasn't appeared yet. But we do have the hope of healing and being infilled with the Ruach. We have to hold on to this hope, but also ask ourselves this month, Yah, what do I need to heal from and what steps do I need to take to heal? 
So the Hebrew letters of the name of this month are an anagram for the Torah verse Ana Yod Yod Refeka, translated to I am Elohim, your Y'all can use other people, but often we think the person who can lay hands and pray for someone and they get healed, or the person who's an excellent surgeon, that they have the gift of healing. But no, the gift of healing is given to the person who needs the healing. That is why Yahshua had to leave certain towns and go to other towns because the faith in certain towns were not high enough for him to heal, and that is Yahshua. And so there's always a part we have to play. This is not the escapist, um, you know, spiritual belief. This is Torah, faith in action. So the message is clear. Healing oneself is the way we connect to our greater, our greater wholeness, shal shalomu in Hebrew. And even we say shalom, 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 but shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken. And that sounds like healing to me. That's why Hebrews traditionally will wish a sick, per a sick person, Rufa Shalima, complete healing. Not halfway healing, not partial healing, but complete healing. Um, some Shabbat prayers um, known as the Yudet Nefesh says, Please, Yahweh, please heal my soul. Please, by showing it the pleasantness of your radiant life, so that it will be strengthened and healed and will have eternal joy. Sometimes we have to just cry out to Yah and say, please Yah, please Yahuwah, please Yahweh, please Elohim, please heal my soul by showing me your radiant light. Sometimes it's easy to heal and easy to forgive when we realize the radiant life of Abba Yahweh. But also give yourself permission to heal. Some of us, we have gotten wrapped up in our unhealed identity. We are known by our infirmity. We feel guilty about healing, maybe because our parents haven't healed or no one from my neighborhood has healed or we think we don't deserve healing. No, healing is the children's bread and it doesn't say some of the children. It says children, period. So give yourself permission to heal. And some ideas for healing. Um, some of the rabbinical sages would tell us that some combination of performing an act of kindness, doing for someone else, caring for our bodies, eating right, exercising, please family, um, please mute yourself um, if you are not, thank you, please, please mute yourself, and uh, um, admins, if you, um, moderators, if you can mute anyone whose mic is not muted, thank you. So do something nice for someone else. Some of us who are healing may need to be from depression. Yes, go to counseling, seek treatment. I believe in prayer and fasting and deliverance. I also believe in counseling to maintain your deliverance and to make sure that you get to the root of why you're depressed. But also when you do something for someone else, it takes your mind off of you and it gives you joy. Care for your bodies, exercise, walk. It's the spring, eat well, pray, study Torah. All of this will help guide us to Rafua Shalima, complete healing. Can someone say complete healing? The divine influence for AR, and if you want to just put complete healing in the chat, complete healing, complete healing. And as you type, it helps your mind to remember this lesson, complete healing, Rafua Shalima, complete healing. We want complete healing in this month. The divine influence for the month of Ar, the month of Ziv, is from Jeremiah 9, 23. Please mute, family. Let us not, let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. And I'll read on to verse 24. But let the one who boasts, boast about this that they have the understanding to know me, that I am Yahweh who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in these I delight, declares Yahweh. Now for the ladies, Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24, what scripture is that from? Ladies on YouTube and Zoom, what scripture is that from? Unmute or put Yes, Wailing Women, thank you. Yes, that is a part of the Wailing Women scripture. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to all the Wailing Women. So we must rely only on the wisdom, strength, and wealth that are divine gifts from Yah. 
And remember, wisdom starts with a fear of Yah. So we need to be very mindful of that. So when we look at this month of Ziv, this month of Ar, we are on a bridge of time between Pesach, Passover, and Shavuot, between the miracle of the exodus from Egypt and the sublime experience of the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. We might have expected the bridge between these two peaks to be majestic and grand, but as is the way with bridges, it is a very narrow bridge. What did Yahshua say? It's a narrow road. Why? Because many will pursue religion. Many will pursue Hebraic identity, Israelite identity. Many will pursue fringes and head wraps in Tahiti. Many will pursue moving to Africa or Israel. Many will pursue not eating shellfish and pork. Many will pursue changing the day of the week they worship and changing their, the names they use for the Most High in Yahshua. Many will pursue joining ministries and camps and organizations. Many will pursue um, judging their friends and family who celebrate the Western holidays. But only a few will go across that very narrow bridge to healing and Rafa Shalima, complete wholeness which is also known as emotional um, mature spirituality, which is also known as the fruit of the Ruach HaKodesh. Because there is no way you can be mature in Yah and not have the evidence of the fruit of the Ruach in your life. So many will pursue a lot of religious stuff, but only a few will walk across that very narrow bridge to complete healing. Is there someone tonight on this Rosh Kodesh AR 5782, who will walk on that narrow bridge to healing with me? Is there somebody out there that this month in the year of our Elohim 5782 that's going to walk on that narrow bridge to healing? Now, I remember in 20, 2003 when a blackout happened in New York and I was working for a day camp in lower Manhattan and I had to get all the way back to East New York, Brooklyn, and a blackout happened and I couldn't take the subway and I had to jump over something to get on the Brooklyn Bridge and there were so many people walking on the Brooklyn Bridge that that big grand bridge felt very narrow. But I had to walk across that bridge to get to Brooklyn, to get home to my family, to get to safety. And you know what started happening because so many were walking on that bridge? The bridge started swaying. Now I thought, because I'm not an engineering girl, I'm not a math or science girl, that's not my anointing. I thought the bridge was going to fall, but a brother told me, no, the bridge is balancing itself so that it won't, so that we can all get across safely. So yes, it's a narrow bridge, but it's enough room for all of us. And as you're walking on that narrow bridge to complete wholeness, Rafua Shalima, it might start swaying and you might get afraid when it started swaying. I looked to my left and my right. I was a young girl. I said, y'all, I don't want to die right now. I've got stuff to do. I ain't been married. I ain't been to Africa yet. I said, I can't die like this. And sometimes when you're going through the process of healing, you will almost feel like you are about to die. When I was going through healing in graduate school from the things I went through in high school, some days I felt like I couldn't take it. But the purging, the counseling, the journaling, when it got the worst, y'all reminded me that his Ruach HaKodesh was in me and that this was necessary because he couldn't let me leave theology school without some key things healed. Now, everything didn't get healed then because healing is an is a ongoing journey. We'll be healing until we pass away. But healing is also a choice. This one ministry that is a counseling ministry, New Life Ministries, they would always say on their radio show, healing is a choice. So if you're going to be completely healed, you got to make a choice to walk on that very narrow bridge. Now, what if I got afraid when the Brooklyn Bridge started swaying and ran off? I could have been trapped in Manhattan without my family, without anyone, an adult that was over me. And so that could have happened to me. So the, these are the, this is what we have to realize. The month of A resonates with the frequency of the letter Vav. Vav in Hebrew is the letter for and, and it's a connector word. It's also the letter for but. It is also the month of great light. 
as its other name is the month meaning radiance. But it is not a light of the miraculous and the sublime as it would be with Passover and Shavuot and even Hanukkah. But it is the sharp focused laser beam of surgeons. So the light you're going to experience during the month of Zid, during the month of Ayar is the light that's going to shine the shine the light on the places that are broken that need to heal. This is why we count the Omer. And I encourage people, don't just pray while counting the Omer, but identify one of the fruits of the Ruach that you need to work on, like patience or self-control or kindness. And every day, not only pray for that to be to be manifested in your life, but look up articles and podcasts, even from the secular realm, even from counseling that talks about why are people impatient? How can you practice more patience? Why are, do some people have self-control? Why do some not? If you need self-control in how you eat or self-control in your time, there are resources for that. You can listen to a podcast. You can read a five minute article. You can Google the fruit of the Ruach you need to develop and scriptures and find information about, how, about scriptures that deal with that issue. This month, we are in spiritual surgery, a delicate and meticulous process of extracting light from darkness. So every person under the sound of my voice, including those who will listen to the replay, you have a light that is within you, that Yahweh, maker of heaven and earth, put in you before your mother conceived you but sometimes we gotta go under the hand of that masterful surgeon known as Yahweh known as the Ruach HaKodesh so that that light that is within us can be separated from the darkness that has come on us living in a fallen world living in captivity our surgeon's tool and power is it, is shown this month as we count the Omer because each day we can harness the counting of the Omer for our spiritual development, for our healing. What if you took this time of Shavuot to not just do 50 days of prayer, which is important, but what if you took this time of counting the Omer to dedicate yourself to 50, and right now we're in 40 something days of healing. Healing, it doesn't matter that we're, we're down, um, we're, we don't have 49 days anymore. We have less for many of us. It doesn't matter. The rest of the counting, the Omer, you can dedicate to healing by asking y'all, how do I heal? Where do I start? And he's not gonna give you a bazillion things. It might be physical, it might be mental. Some of you might be told to go you know, work out. Some might be told to start counseling. Some might be told to do forgiveness. Some might be told to break soul ties. I don't know what you need to heal from. But this is a special time, this counting the Omer. Each unique quality of the 49 days, the attributes, the divine attributes that can also be found encapsulated in the fruit of the Ruach, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, point to areas of growth and expansion within us with a laser position, precision. Now, it does not matter what, how many people you heal, how many people follow you on social media, how many people you awaken to your, their Hebrew heritage, how many seeds you sow. All of that stuff is well and good. But in order to know that you are a matured and healed believer, the fruit of the Ruach has to be manifested in your life. And of course, all the fruit are not going to be manifested at the same time. But as we go on, more fruit should be manifested. The fruit of the Ruach is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against there is no law. And that is found in Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23. But I encourage you to read the whole chapter. So when we think about Ar Ziv, we should remember that they say Miriam's well appeared to provide water for the Israelites. Manna fell from heaven. Yah is not going to just rip all the band-aids off of your heart, mind, and soul and say heal, but he's going to provide you refreshment. He's going to provide you living water. Once you drink of the water from Yah, you will not thirst, like Yahshua said. He's going to provide you manna, friends to encourage you, a therapist to work with, a friend to exercise with. During this month, we count the Omer as we prepare for Shabbat for Shavuot, but what if this month, each day, we're dedicating ourselves to healing, even if it's only for five minutes a day? 
The 14th of Ayar is Pesach Shenani, the second Passover. So if you miss the first Passover on the 14th of Ayar, now just count 13 days from today, you can take a Passover again. Not the whole Feast of Unleavened Bread, just the first night of Passover. That is how important Passover is. This month, I want to encourage everyone to keep a journal and make a few um, notes about the Torah portions. We post the Torah portions every week on Prophetic World and social media, but you can also just Google the Torah portion. See how the Torah portions connect with the traits associated with the month of AR, the traits of healing and wisdom. And then in your journal, prayerfully answer these questions. Ask Yah, what do I need to heal from? And ask Yah, what steps will I take to heal? And so those are some of the themes for the month of AR, for the month of Ziv. I want to encourage each and every one of you to walk on that narrow bridge to Rafa Shalima, complete and total healing. Because healing is the children's bread and Yah wants to give us healing each and every month, not just AR. Because it doesn't matter if we get free from this captivity, if we are still carrying the unhealed wounds of slavery. So with that, I, these are just some few themes about this month. And now I am excited to just turn it over to my brother at Moray at Awame um, from the Global African Business Association from Hebraic Wisdom for Investors. He's a member of Bed Ephraim in um, Detroit under Moray Laws. He's also the author of The Wealthy Home, and he is also the founder of International Community Markets. And brother, you are a co-host. And so I thank you, and I'm looking forward to hearing the prophetic perspective for this month. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Onilove. Uh, thank you for having me. And I want to thank everyone who has tuned in uh, to listen now and will be listening to the replay. I'll share my screen here and we will get right into it. Hallelujah. Yeah, okay. So when the second month um, air. Uh, happy new month to everyone. Uh, this goes from 2nd of May to 31st of May. And the theme for this prophetic season that we are in is we will arise and build. This is from Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20. Now we are in the Hebrew year 5782 where the house speaks. But pay, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because I would like us to focus a little more on the second month and what we are to expect. Okay, so bait is two, and that is a word for um, the Hebrew letter two signifies or shows a floor plan, a tent. Uh, so it speaks of a house as a place of protection, nurturing, provision, identity and inheritance. Now also words that are linked with two uh, um, or, or the house, Bet El, the house of El. Uh, it's a place of visitation. From the 10th month, we have been visited. Um, also Bethlehem, the house of bread. Uh, where do you store your bread? That becomes very important. The story of Ruth, when Ruth came back to Bethlehem because there was bread in Bethlehem. We've been saying for months that Ruth is coming. Well, Ruth is now here. Um, also very interesting uh, for this Hebraic season we found ourselves is, is um, uh, Bea, you know, husband, Lord of the house, who is your Elohim? You know, who who, who is considered your Elohim? Is the dollar your Elohim? Is the news media your Elohim? Do um, you believe the word of this expert or that expert? Or is, is, is the most high your Elohim? There is a battle going on with that. And we'll see that continue to play out in 
5782. Very important is our family altar. Our family altar must be put in order. Also, in this prophetic season, will you forgive as you are forgiven? You know, there will be a lot of opportunity for you to forgive. How would you treat other nations as they cleave to you? Whether you're a Moabite, an Edomite, a Moabite like Ruth, you know, an, an Edomite like Cornelius, um, or, or every other nation. How would we treat other nations as they start cleaving to us because it has already started? Are we going to treat them the way we were treated? Or are we going to go by the Torah that said, thou shalt not despise the Edomite, for he is your brother. If we act the way other nations act to us, then what makes us different? How are we a separated people, a different people? Let us, you know, forgive as we have been forgiven and let's treat other nations the way our father has treated us. Okay, so from a high level here, the next generation will be released to build according to pattern. It will be a year of redemption, restoration, and rebuilding. The house, which is your heart, the assembly, the church, the nation will be reordered. A lot of doctrinal issues will be reordered. And we're seeing that unfold, you know, right before our very eyes. Um, I, I just want to encourage us, continue to move forward. Continue to move forward. Okay, so at this time, this is where we unmute our mic, each and every one of us, and we say our declaration. So at the count of three, we'll say our declaration together. One, two, three, let's go. I am a child of Israel. Israel. I am of the king seat. I, I am a princess. princess. I have no blemish. I am, I am well, well favored. I am skillful in all wisdom. I am knowledge. knowledge. I, I understand science. I have the ability in me to stand in the key. I am teachable. I am the head of society. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's, uh, I, I'm going to read our declaration here from our Miss Oni Love. She wrote this in September. I, I, I have to remind us when this was written. Uh, because sometimes we feel a say, you, you know, you know, sometimes when we go through situations, we say things like, yeah, you don't understand. <laughs> well, he does. That's why he, he's giving us this word way ahead of time. In the name, righteousness, and blood of Yeshua, the Messiah, we decree and declare that 5782 will be the year where our house and bloodline will be built. 5782 will be the year when we step into our mantles, is that not happening? And the year that elders elevate their sons and daughters, is that not happening? We decree and declare that 5782 will be the year where the voice of the son arises to declare the Basora, the message of Yahweh's kingdom. Is that not happening? We decree and declare that in the midst of chaos, ha, we will be beacons of wisdom and shalom. That is a charge to you. Houses put together by Yahweh will begin prophetic bloodlines. Oh, we got a long list of testimonies. <laughs> Hallelujah. That will lead our people to liberation. In Yeshua's name, we declare. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, this is just a quick recap of the 13th month. Um, uh, you know, the Most High told us it's going to be stormy in the earth. He said, keep your eyes on me, ascend and worship. Then we went into the first month where he said, worship in the house. It is harvest time. 
count your blessings. In other words, make this a priority. Purposefully count your blessings. Oh, do you see the great things happening in Africa? Oh, yeah, but they're still poor. Is that how you're counting your blessings? Oh, we see what is happening in the Black community. More businesses are being raised. It's like, but yeah, we still need some reparation. Uh, count your blessings. Count your blessings. You have to be intentional about it. That was the first one. Also, hear the call to return. He sent a call across the earth and the prodigal started returning to the house. He gave us a charge to have a clean heart and a pure mind. And he said to us that the channel of your spirit will break open. Okay, now what should we expect in the second month that we have just begun? Two things I would say to us, humble yourself. We are a very proud people. Black men are proud, black women are proud. We are all, now, if you say you don't have pride, that right there is pride. Humble yourself. This is a month to humble yourself. And the second thing I would say to you, avoid strife and complaining. Now, let's look at the scripture here. Um, in Genesis chapter 13, I'll read from verse 6 to 8. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their possession was great, so that they could not dwell together. Verse 7. And there was a strife between the headsmen of Abram's cattle and the headsmen of Lot's cattle. The Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt them, with them in the land. Now, verse 8, very important. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife. Somebody has to take the high road this month. Somebody has to humble himself. Now, Abram was one that brought Lot along. Abram was one that said, you know, that took him to Egypt, that showed him the ropes. They had great possession. And then he began to drag the land with him. Abram did not say, listen, boy, I brought you up. I gave you this. I did this, that, and the other. He said, no, let there be no strife between us. I pray you, between me and you and between your headsmen and mine. Why? Because we are Brethren, so the question to you this month, what is more important? Your possession, your pride, your elevated status, or your brother or your sister? I, I say this to my children all the time. Who, what is more important to you? That toy or your brother? That toy or your sister? This is what we are going to confront this month. Will you be like our father Abraham that took the high road, humbled himself and said, let there be no strife between us. Humble yourself because the most high is going to test you this month. He's going to increase you. He's going to elevate you. There's going to be promotion. There's going to be unmerited favor. And when you come into that place, would you now say, now it is time for me to, to, you know, to, to give you back the way you've treated me? Or would you humble yourself and say, let there be no strife between us? Would you serve as the first century Hebrew served in Acts chapter 6? Would you serve like Peter served in Acts chapter 10 after he heard the call to go to Cornelius, the Edomites, and said, you are being visited. The Most High has come to me and said, I must go to you. Would you humble yourself and respond to that call? Let there be no strife. And let there be no complaining this month. Resolve conflicts quickly because in the third month, there's going to be massive seismic breakdowns. Whatever is not at heart is going to break up. And finally, I'm, I'm going to, you know, share with us this scripture. Job chapter 23, 
and verse 10. Job chapter 23 and verse 10, he says here, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. The refiner's fire will put you through the fire. But I decree to you that you will come forth as gold. You will shine as gold. You will pass the test. You will humble yourself and you will move forward in this season. So I bless you in the name of Yeshua. And I say, go forth and prosper this month in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Moray, for that powerful prophetic perspective. And these are not words that fall to the ground, family. These are not words that fall to the ground. We have children that have been born um, it, um, after these words. We have, you know, many things that have come to pass. And so we thank you, Moray, doctor, as we say, for giving us the prophetic perspective. If you want to connect with our brother, this is his email. Also, you can enroll in 2022 Hebraic Wisdom for Investors. We have two more classes. If you complete this year, you'll be eligible for the Elite Investment Club, um, which is run by our Kingdom Kai family and um, Amore Adewame. And you can also sew into him at his Cash App, and his links are also in his bio. And we want to also encourage everyone um, to get the Wealthy Home Book Launch. In ABIB, we were blessed to um, host a digital book launch. This book um, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and many places. And we dropped one of the links for his book in the chat. So thank you so much, Moray. It's a blessing to bring in the new month with you. Shalom. And so family, we really, really um, appreciate these prophetic perspectives. And if you signed up for the Rosh Kodesh online worship services, you are going to get the prophetic perspective in your email. And so um, we are grateful for that. And um, we just want to um, remind you of that as well. And so now we are going to introduce our guest speaker and um we will come back to prayer if that is okay prophetess but we want to um introduce our guest speaker and i'm just trying to spotlight her i'm so sorry family and um we are truly truly appreciative of our guest speaker um, and she is someone who is truly just following Yah's path. And she is someone who truly understands our theme. And again, I asked, I felt led to ask her to speak on healing as worship to Yah. And I have forgotten that for this month, the a key theme is healing. I promise you, I forgot that a key um, theme for this month was healing. And so Yah is good. His word is faithful. And he I, He always guides who should bring the word this month. And so before I even looked at my AR notes and realized, yes, this is a key month for healing, I asked the woman of Yah to speak about this. And so it is my honor to introduce Pastor Renice V. Kirkland founder and pastor of Pinnacle Worship Assembly International in St. Louis, Missouri to you. Um, this is her congregation is a multicultural church and outreach organization that teaches from the Hebraic perspective. And she is truly someone who in, in my estimation and just observing her and ministering with her, she is very balanced in this awakening. Over the past 15 years, Pastor Renice Kirkland has sought out to fulfill her call, preaching and teaching the gospel. In 2014, she began Sabbath study in her home. Due to growth, service moved to a local library. From there, Pinnacle Worship Assembly Ohio was established, then later Pinnacle Worship Assembly in St. Louis. 
Being a domestic violence abuse survivor, Pastor Renice birthed a women's empowerment group called Refresh Her. Refresh Her is a safe place where women can gain their voice, understand their worth, and become diamonds. Yahweh destined the, and become the diamonds that Yahweh destined them to be. This is accomplished through prayer, relationship building, networking, retreats, and conferences. And I was honored to be a speaker at her Refresh Her conference. Pastor Kirkland is submitted under the leadership of Apostle Dr. Sheldon Hudson. She has an earned bachelor's degree of biblical studies from the Free and Independent School of Theology, FIST, in Jacksonville, North Carolina. She is pursuing her education in hopes of obtaining her doctorate degree in theology. Pastor Kirkland has been married to Elder Gregory Kirkland for seven years. Together, they have a blended family of nine children, 15 grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. And so it is my pleasure and my humble honor to present to you Pastor Renice Kirkland, our guest teacher for tonight, talking about healing as worship to Yah. And it is truly an honor. I know you are so busy, but thank you for always asking my, um, answering my calls. If I'm coming to you for health stuff or to just ask you a question like, ooh, this teaching look crazy. Pastor, you, you see it, you are always there. And thank you for answering the call right after Pesach. And thank you for just all the ways that you are serving Yah's people. And so I turn it over to you, women, woman of Yahweh. Thank you so very much. Let me know if you can hear me okay. If I need to turn on my volume, if everything is okay. Yes, I can hear okay. you. All right. So you guys, please forgive my um my voice here because I'm a little bit hoarse, but it is okay. Um, I do not have any slides um, because again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm growing, I'm learning how to be that prepared, but I do want to share with you all um, just a couple of things that I think is very important. First, I want to share with you all my testimony and where I've come from. Um, as uh, Apostle Only Love has said, I am a domestic abuse survivor and I absolutely find it very important that um, you have to be in a position where you truly have to um, deal with where you are. Um, and I, I pride myself on sharing where I've come from, because at one point in time, I was very, very um, ashamed of that. Um, and so through everything I've heard, through the prophetic lens of what I heard, um, my abuse was not just physical, it was verbal. Um, which goes to as well being um, e e an emotional. And so this is important because we have to understand that when we um, come into the awakening, understanding who we are as the most high chosen people, it's very, very crucial and important that we do not forget um, actually like who we are um, and who we were prior to coming into this knowledge of truth. Because what I have found is that when you come into this knowledge of truth, meaning identifying who you are according to scripture, we go from one extreme to the other. And so I can honestly say that for me, I came into the knowledge of truth, meaning I came into the understanding of who we were as a people. And so I was very radical. I went from one extreme to the other. Yes, I was in church, born and raised in the church, then moved and, and then became a minister. And then from there, um, I came into this knowledge of truth of understanding who I was. Um, and then when I say it was an extreme or extremity is because I went from knowing this to understanding that while at the same time, not understanding that I was not healed in my mind, body, or spirit. And so it is very, is very important for me as a leader, as a teacher of the word, to be sure that identity is absolutely important. Let me pause right here. Apostle, can you guide me on how, if I can see comments um, on the screen, because I see the, what you have shown with my bio per se, and I'm on the side. 
Um, can you guide me with how I can see comments so, if there's questions? If you look at the bottom or the top of your screen, you should see a microphone, a camera that says stop video, security, participants, and then chat. And then you can see the comments in, on Zoom in the chat. In order to see the YouTube comments, um, you would just have to sign on to YouTube on another. Okay. But so if I'll just keep it in the chat for here for um, Zoom. So, okay, thank you, appreciate it. So, um, as I was saying, it's important that we understand as what has everyone been saying is, what does it mean to heal? And so domestic abuse, um, in and of itself is something that we as a people, um, as we have understood and know the travesty and the abuse and the injustice that we have experienced from our ancestors until now has been great. But one of the things that the community as a whole has to get better at is individual healing. We cannot heal as a nation of people. We cannot heal as a community of believers if we do not take the time to heal individually. So what good or what sense does it make for me to identify with a whole and I don't stop and take time to identify with me, myself, and I. Why have I allowed myself um, to be abused? Why did I allow myself to be devalued? Why did I allow myself to not be appreciated? Why did I allow myself to not understand the detriment that I was allowing or the abuse that I was allowing because healing in and of itself you must get to the place where besides making excuses, that's the easy way. And you all just flow with me for a second. It might seem harsh, but I promise you it's going to be good. Um, it's going to get better as we go through. Um, what sense does it make for us as a nation to want to share um, with everyone else who we are? And so this is what we need to do um, so that we can understand that we are important and that we are valuable and that there is a method to the madness. But then we don't take time to identify our own individual issues that's connected to us not being healed. Healing is very important, mind, body, and spirit. Why? Because you will not be balanced um, in anything that you do. You absolutely will not be balanced. I can know all the knowledge in the world. I could come into the knowledge. I did come into the knowledge of who I was as an African-American woman, which I understood being an African-American. How did I get that term or how did I identify with what was told to me? All right. Then once I came and understood all of that, who still was I? What is my identity as Renice? I was born Renice Vernell Sewell is my maiden name. I was born Renice Vernell Sewell. Yes, my heritage. Yes, my identity. Yes, knowing where I come from is important because I love this saying that I heard and that I, I continuously share. You can never know where you're going if you don't know where you've come from. But while we're wanting to know where we come from, to know the end of the story, listen, we for, we're forgetting the in-between. So my healing, what is needed of me, is absolutely imperative because it goes back to why are you oppressed? Why am I oppressed? Why do I want to know? Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge is head. It is information. I can have all the information in the world, but if I don't know how to process the information and make it applicable to me, it's senseless. Yes, I can have all the knowledge in the world of me being, listen, a descendant of the ancient children of, listen, children of the most high, Israelite. I can say all day, yes, I am a descendant of the ancient Hebrew, Israelite, that's in the Bible, that's good. But how does that help me right now in 2022, all right? How does that help me 
right now that I am who I am and how do I connect that with me to get to that over there? We got to understand as a community, we are not healed as a community as a whole. We absolutely must stop. Y'all hear me and I love you all. I don't have to, this is my sister apostles, uh, uh, her, 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 her platform. And I, I, I may not ever get another opportunity again, all right? So I believe in giving it all the way I'm led so that it can make impact to who needs to hear it, all right? Listen, you can know that all day long, but I will challenge you that as you hear what I'm going to show you in scripture, I pray that you stop, all right? I pray that you stop and literally hear the spirit if the spirit is saying to you, wait a minute, you have enough knowledge of knowing who you are. Yes, you've connected that I chose the people. The people did not choose me. Yes, you understand that the promises of the most high Yahweh in him are yes, and they are amen. With all that being said, yes, there's going to be a balancing of the scales when it's all said and done. But please let me help share with you all the revolution of truth and the revolution understanding that what is the revolution? Many people are returning back to the correct Eastern way of belief. Many people that are not Israelite, that don't identify as an Israelite, many people who identify as being a Christian or whatever denomination or whatever way they decide to categorize themselves. Listen, the revolution is happening. Watch this, that there is one way to the father and he is the one who deemed the code of ethics and the form of worship unto himself. And so, yes, he chose a people, but him choosing a people did not disqualify anyone else. So what is the healing part that we must do that I'm passionate about? We must heal mind, body, and spirit. And this, what I want to show you all is through a couple of scriptures and I'm going to be done. When I understood as a domestic abuse survivor, first, I needed to seek mental health. I needed to go and speak to someone. I needed to recognize that I could not help myself. I could not journey through what I needed to journey through to be healed. And I was a minister, hear me. And I was preaching and teaching the gospel, unhealed and hurt. I absolutely needed to get my mental together. When the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Yahshua, which is in Philippians 2, 5. That is not a question. It is absolutely a command. Yahshua said, let this mind that was in me, Paul said, let it also be in you. Yahshua, listen, was absolutely balanced. He was in harmony, mind, body, and spirit, no matter what was given to him, what was thrown at him, all right? He absolutely knew how to respond. For the Bible says that we are to be angry, but sin not. What does this have to do with healing? Because healing has to do with you physically, mentally, and spiritually, literally. The Bible promises us healing, but the Bible does not promises, promise us miracles. I need y'all to hear me. The Bible teaches, if we read it right, it promises us healing. So the Father, Yahweh, don't want us to really all just understand who we are as a people. No, he wants us to recognize, okay, let's go down that way. But when we recognize it, all right, who we are, what is the healing that needs to happen after we come into the knowledge of truth? So what is the healing portion of it? Many of us are imbalanced because we only want to identify with that which we know and see and can prove according to scripture, but we miss the most important part. You, hear me, I am beautiful, so are you. You are absolutely beautiful. You absolutely 
were a part of the plan before the foundation of the world. When I was abused physically, I used to say this, when my abuser would beat me, hear me, I used to say, I would rather you, watch this, hit me than to now cuss me out, talk about me, all call me all kinds of names because in my mind, physically, the bruises would heal. Hmm. Many of us are synonymously thinking that we're healed because from somewhere, I'm gonna speak for me, there was a euphoria and a high that I kept talking about God. I kept saying, I know who God is. I kept teaching and preaching from the aspect of him being there and I'm here and I need to live my life because I want to get there so I can be with him then. No, no, no. Let me tell you what healing in the mind, body, and spirit does. When I understood that Yahweh, hear me, says that healing is my portion as a believer. Healing is your portion as a believer. How can you say that? Because your healing requires you to identify, watch this, identify with the source. And when you connect yourself to the source, healing absolutely becomes your portion. Why? Because healing is not just about this miraculous thing that happened and we're going to wait on Yahweh to do it for us and we're going to wait for Yahweh to manifest it through his spirit. No, 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 no. Because when you understand healing from the Bible perspective, you will understand that the identifying character or your identity as many of us on here, Hebrew Israelite, when you understand that your identity as a Hebrew Israelite, y'all just bear with me, go with me. You clutch your pearls if you need to clutch your pearls, okay? Your identity, identity as a Hebrew Israelite is not primary. No, no, it's not primary. We have it displaced because I said I was a Hebrew Israelite. Hear me, I'm going to healing. I said I was a Hebrew Israelite, but I was not healed. I was not whole. I was not delivered. And I was teaching. And I was preaching, listen, word, and I was teaching knowledge, but there was no application. Therefore, I was not balanced, nor was I in the right mind frame, listen, to guide people to a way of being healed because I had not experienced it for myself. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hear me. We, as the community who say we know who we are according to scripture, we got to take a pause and stop trying to get everybody else to see who we are, because can I help you? You are now saying you want to be validated and you need someone else to validate who you are. You're not healed. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to give you some scriptures and then I'm going to move. All right, here we go. If you go to Genesis 1, 26, this is what it says. I heard apostles say this, and I heard um, the brother, the prophet say, when we were, he were talking about, they were talking about the Hebrew word, the Vav, and what that means. And so I'm not going to go down that path because it was mentioned. I'm just going to bring it in um, to connect a few points again, because I'm led just to only share these scriptures with you all. Go Genesis 126 says this. It's very familiar, but I want you all to go back, write it down, and understand um, how I'm going to and what was the catalyst to my healing. How did I truly get healed, mind, body, and spirit? All right. This is how I discovered it. Genesis 126 says this. It says, bear with me one second. It says, then. Yah said, let us make man, then Elohim said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Watch this. So Elohim created man in his own image. 
in the image of Yah, he created him, male and female, he created them. Listen, Genesis 126 says, the Elohim said, let us make man, that is not the man, male gender, let us make mankind, listen, in our image, all right, in our likeness, step number one, that's identity. You must understand what started my healing. I studied and the, the spirit showed me that I wasn't healed. I was preaching from a gospel that I did not understand the very heart of the matter concerning me. We can preach and teach the gospel of Yahshua, but however, how do we as a people individually begin to be healed the month of Ayah of healing, self-reflection? You must identify and see the words in that scripture that when I understood my identity before recognizing and before the nation of Israel became a nation, that I was created in the image and in the likeness of Yahweh. What did that mean? That means that when he created me, he created me, watch this, with a piece or with himself, listen, in the shaping and the forming of me. Y'all, I'm a for real preacher. Y'all forgive me if it come out. Y'all don't talk bad about me. It's okay, but this is just who I am. I love the word. When I understood that the father, the Elohim said, let us make mankind, then it's man, then it's woman, but first mankind in our image. I understood that before the foundation of the world, Yahweh, the Elohim fashioned me, listen, after himself. I did not have to suffer abuse. I did not have to suffer misuse. I understood and I knew what my value was at that point. Y'all hear me, come on. You understand your value and your worth. Hear me, because when you identify, listen, yourself with the creator, hear me. When you identify that the creator is you, y'all don't hear me. When you identify that I am the creator, I can say that because the Bible talks about that we are gods. We're not the most high, Yah. No, we are the ones that was created and fashioned after him. He thought so much about you and me that he said, I'm not going to just make them like that over there or whatever it was. Hear me. He said, let us create them mankind in our image. He thought so much of you and me that we absolutely were created specifically identified through his character and essence. Y'all understand? Does that make sense to you all? So what I'm saying is what started my journey of healing when I identified with that, according to the scripture, it blew my mind. Let's go further. Here's where I'm going to hang my hat. And this is where I'm going to be done because Ephesians 2, I do not want to be disobedient and just go all along and be, no. So then it took me to Ephesians 2 and 10. So understand this, when you look at IR and the letter that's in that particular word, all right, you will see the Vav as Apostle said, absolutely. And the Vav, hear me, when you look at it, she gave the definition of that the Vav, it does mean to add or to secure. And when you look at Vav and the picture or the pictograph of the letter Vav, it absolutely represents or looks like it is a tent peg. Mm -hmm. It means stability. You cannot, if you are insecure in yourself, when you're insecure, hear me, with who you are, don't identify with being a Hebrew Israelite, but you can't identify yourself as a man or a woman. Y'all don't want to hear me. Don't identify, listen, who we are as a people, and you are not effective at identifying who you are as the creation of the Most High. Hear me, because that's lopsided. So now we're in a position where we are absolutely 
Hear me carefully, you all. We are teaching unbalanced because we're focusing on this is who we are. You're going to accept it. The Father's going to get you. Yahweh going to get you. Yahuwah is going to come back. Yahuwah is going to make it all right. Yahuwah said, Yahweh said, all these things. That is not love. That is not the right identity. You are identified based upon who made you, who created you. Remember that. Hear me. You are ident your identity is all about you recognizing that the Father, watch this, created you to house his presence, not house the fact that you are an Hebrew Israelite. I am not saying it's not important. Please hear me. He created you to house his presence. That was the purpose of the ark. That was the purpose, listen, of the sanctuary of the Old Testament, because the New Testament, hear me, Yahshua coming, is so that 50 days of Omer, we are going to celebrate, yes, at Pentecost or at Shavuot, listen, the giving of Torah, absolutely, as well as understanding that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is what changed from Old Testament to New Testament. Oh my goodness, hear me. What changed? Many people who say that the Holy Spirit just showed up on the scene in the New Testament, absolutely incorrect. That is not scripture because, listen, the Holy Spirit was there even in the beginning, all right? That goes to study. Now we got to understand, but why am I celebrating Shavuot? Why am I celebrating Pentecost? Because the ministering of the Holy Spirit is what changed. Y'all help me. In the Old Testament of Torah, you will either see that the Holy Spirit, listen, fell upon. You will also see that the Holy Spirit entered in, but he did not remain, nor did he dwell. I feel the Holy Spirit. He either fell upon or you will read he entered in. All right. But he did not fall upon, nor did he dwell. The Holy Spirit, when he came at Sinai, all right, or at the giving of the Torah. And then when we see it in Acts 2, the amazing part was, hear me. That the, that, the, that the the son said, if I don't go, I can't prepare you a place. The Holy Spirit can't go. He is the paraclete. The ministering of the Holy Spirit is what changed. He absolutely lives in and he dwells. And the father said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's why it's beautiful. You got to be healed because Ephesians 2 and 10, and I'm done. Hear me. Ephesians 2 and 10 said this. This is what sparked my healing. And I teach this even to my congregation, to every woman. Ephesians 2 and 10 says this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ, Yahshua for good works, which Yahweh prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hear me. When you look at that word workmanship, I told you Genesis 1. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 10. That word workmanship. Hear me. When I got truly healed, remember healing is balancing your mind, body, and spirit. If one portion of you is off, you're not healed. Walking out and becoming balanced is an everyday work. The month that we are in now, the counting down of Omer, listen, it is absolutely self-reflection time because you need to pour out and tell the Father where you are still struggling. To thine own self be true. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The many things, the, the majority of what we are seeing right now, I don't care if you say you're Christian, I don't care if you say you're Hebrew Israelite, what's the issue? There are many people who believe, but many people are not converted. Listen, many people believe. People aren't converted because there's no way you can say you believe, but then your actions don't change. Your mind, that's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Yahshua. The Bible, Romans says that you got to renew your mind. Don't conform. It is a constant work and a refreshing. So Ephesians 2, when it says, we are his workmanship, that word workmanship 
It is poema, P-O-I-E-M-A. Can I tell y'all this? When I looked up poema, workmanship, this means you are a beautiful, crafted design of Yahweh, who's ever hearing me. You absolutely must understand, hear me, if you can't get in your mind that I am fearfully and wonderfully made according to Psalms 143, I need you to go and study poema because this is what you will find. The Bible says that there are books. Listen, there's a book in the Shammite. There's a book in heaven with your name on it. There is a book. Go to Psalms. Go study it. There's a book in heaven with your name on it. In the book, your job being, listen, gifted to be in this earth, on this earth with your life. Your job is to connect with the book to see what did Yahweh, what does Yahweh have in that book for you? And you must understand that whatever it is that Yahweh has in that book with your name on it, hear me. He already knows who's going to make it in. Yes, he already knows the decision. He already knows it all. But the beauty about it is this. He thought enough of you so much that he said, this is a book and this is Renice Kirkland's name, Renice Sewell. And I want Renice to get so into me to recognize that I am in her, that I want her to tap into the resource and get everything and walk out everything that's in those pages. You are a beautiful artistry. You are handcrafted. You are a workmanship that the father took his hands with and crafted you exactly the way you are from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. And if you don't understand who you are, you are missing the manifestation and the glory of Yahweh in your life. Because how can you talk and teach about a father who you have not even recognized or really understand who he is. Because when I realized that I was created to house his presence because there was a name with my, there's a book with my name on it. Listen, I don't take the time to worry about what other people is doing to me. I don't take the time to, to, to argue and debate senseless arguments that has nothing to do with my salvation. I don't have to prove to anybody who I am. I have learned to just be. I've learned to just move. I've learned that I have not arrived. I've learned that, yes, there are things that I'm always going to tunnel with. But when your mind gets all the way healed, everything about you will fall into place. And it starts with you identifying with who the Most High Yahweh is for real, not abstracted from you, but that you learn to figure out who he is. Watch this. The one that you say is in you. The one that you say that you have a personal relationship. The one that you say he delivered my ancestors. And so I'm going to be delivered too. Wait, pause though. But are you delivered? Or are you trying to get people to come into a knowledge of something to prove them wrong? And then you're not doing yourself the great justice of just living for the father has given us a life to live whole and complete. He promises us healing y'all, but he does not promise miracles. Miracles is at the discretion of Yahweh. Listen, miracles is at the discretion of him. But if he promises you healing, I encourage you all to go and to be healed. Get a mental health worker. Listen, go now because that's my heart and my passion. I'm done, Apostle. My passion is to be able to listen for the woman to know. Listen, women can lead. 
because even within our, it, we, we're still arguing and arguing and fussing over if women can lead. Listen, I have a, a husband. I am not the pastor at home. I am submitted to my husband. We got to be able to get these things together because, listen, you all, if we're supposed to be the light, then we need to exercise and practice being the light first by applying our own word that we're sharing to everybody else with us. So this is the month that the light is going to dispel every darkness because the vibe, listen, the vibe, the security in you must rise and you're not secure off of a false hope but you are secure in the hope that he who had begun a good work in you, it shall come to pass. Your job is to walk it out. Your job is to be a witness. Your job is to realize you are a workmanship. And it's only through the power of the most high that gives you the will to do and to do and to do of his good pleasure. So I pray healing upon each of you. I pray that you, you, your challenge. I pray that you know that if the father did it for me, he absolutely can do it for you, but it requires commitment, dedication, and being very, very naked between you and the most high. Thank you so, so much, pastor. Thank you. Thank you. You understood the assignment. Thank you so, so much. And I just love how the Ruach is just bringing he brings things together we didn't all get together i didn't speak to adawame we, other than asking you to do this we didn't go into a lot of say this say that thank you because this is an on time message that i hope many many American hebrews here because we really really are in danger of missing the whole entire point and I thank you for sharing your story. It is sacred when we share our testimony because Revelation says we're not only saved by the blood of the lamb, we're saved by the words of our testimony. So thank you for just being so supportive. Thank you for your words around healing this month. It is really, really ministering to so many. And on YouTube, the comments are just so, so many comments. Self-reflection time. Many people believe, yet many are not converted. Um, what you said about workmanship. Um, also, this um, preach and teach this. Just so many comments. And we give all glory to Yah. And I thank you and your husband. Um, I know it takes a lot out of us when we minister. So we just appreciate you. And we honor you. And we encourage everyone, please connect with her. She's not only a mother and a grandmother and a wife she and a minister she also has a cool jewelry business that i begin caught up in y'all pray my strength um rvk jewelry also look up pinnacle worship assembly on youtube but if you are in the st louis area please please visit this is a safe balance assembly where you're going to know you're going to learn how to keep the torah but you're going to learn how to be healthy and whole because that is what it's about. Follow her on, um, follow Pinnacle Worship International on Instagram, on Facebook. We're dropping her links in the chat. Please donate and sow into this woman of Yah. Um, she is truly doing Yah's will and words, and she's not forgetting those who still need healing and being very balanced. And I've just watched you over the past few years just go through 360 degrees of healing and being an inspiration to me of someone who is balanced um and someone who is really seeking to be all that y'all has for you to be it's an honor and i have much love for you and thank you for the ways in which you have helped me on my healing journey and everything you poured out we just pray in the name of yahshua hamashiach to yah that he pours it back into you as he takes you to greater heights in yahshua's name amen and amen we honor you and so please especially sisters we're asking you to tap into refresh her that is on facebook um tap into refresh her so just look that up on facebook that is a conference for women um that i was honored to be a part of and it's also an online community and so tap into that 
And if um, anyone, as the pastor said, it's okay to get counseling. There are our people who do counseling. Even if they're not awakened to their Hebraic heritage, they're still Israel. They're doing counseling. They, even many of them know the scriptures. In the, in the multitude of many counselors, there are safety. Most people who are successfully overcoming and just living life have counselors, have coaches. On this call, we have Omari um, White with Regimen Solution Coaching. Um, brother, drop your link in the chat. We have Maura Kadashabatya who's working now, but she has Renewed Sisters Coaching, Faith-Based Coaching for Women. But please, family, heed the word of Yah. And Pastor, do you have any um, final words you want to say? No, I just pray, like you said, and not to be long, because you know how we always can talk about I'm not going to do that. But it's just really a passion for me because there's so many women. My biggest thing for me is that I, the women that I've connected with um, and just sharing so many of the, there are women who know that they have leadership roles. And they're trying to move forward, but because of the knowledge, you know what I mean? It's, it's not easy for them to, you know, traverse through that. And it breaks my heart because it, it's, it's just not, it's not, it's unfortunate. And so I just really would encourage you all to find somebody, don't be ashamed, find somebody to talk to um, and, it, and, and, and really just commit yourself it's not about being perfect but if you keep searching I promise you you will come across the right one and I believe in um keeping things because I you know how I had to come out it's not overnight that I left my abuse but I really want to encourage you all like for women especially it's very important that you all get healed and that you identify with the father not identity I'm not identified based on you know what I'm saying your husband so that's really big a big a passion of mine because we're hurting we're hurting we are hurting really bad so no that's it that's just my prayer thank you so much pastor thank you so so much pastor um and um dr kristen if you can drop the great awakening interdisciplinary team website in this chat that would be helpful that is a team of hebraic counselors coaches and um and on a variety of issues, but it don't only be held up with, oh, they have to be an awakened Hebrew, because even though someone might be an awakened Hebrew trained counselor, you might need someone who has a specialization in trauma. You may need someone who has a specialization in depression. So yes, we want to tap on our Hebraic folks, but we also, you have to find the, per, the, the counselor who is also trained in what you are particularly going through. But Dr. Kristen, if you could please drop that link in the chat, we would appreciate it. And also on YouTube, um, we do not have a list of recommended counselors. We ask people to do your own research. Um, you can go to the Great Awakening site. They do have some people, but again, um, you have to make sure the person is not just Hebraic, but that they have a training in what you need. Um, you know, so we we definitely appreciate the interdisciplinary team, but don't just rush to coaching because you feel comfortable with that more so than a psychologist. Coaching is just for achieving goals and that is extremely important. But if you have serious depression issues or PTS issues, you have to go to a therapist um, because we, we have a lot of shame around this stuff and it's sad because people who are very highly successful other communities do not have the shame and they haven't even gone through the trauma we've gone through so we know that yah is a healer but we also want to do our part and so um thank you so much kristen i appreciate it maury malcolm dropped his coaching link in the chat i'm going to drop maura kadasha's link as well and um I will try to drop the interdisciplinary team link into the YouTube chat. So just give us a moment and we want to encourage everyone write down these resources. Also copy these resources, um, you know, take responsibility. We're not going to email all of these out um, because you have to in order for any type of therapy or coaching to work. I love y'all, but you have to take the initiative. So if you can't copy or write down a website, 
um, this, you know, you might end up wasting the time of a coach or a therapist, you know, so Yahshua said, do you want to be made whole? So we're going to ask that people, um, you know, copy these links down, write them down or copy them down as well. And so we thank you, um, Pastor Renice Kirkland, please connect with her, especially if you are in the St. Louis area. Many people want to know, where do I keep the feast? How do I find a safe place? There are safe balance Hebraic assemblies. So, you know, find out how to connect with those assemblies. And we just want to ask you, you know, her links are in the chat. So into the woman of Yah, this was an on time message. And so we want to just be obedient and grateful to what Yah has done. Thank you. Um, Pastor Sis for taking the time right after Pesach to do this message. I do not take it lightly and we honor you and we just um, thank y'all for you. And so family, we want to really encourage everyone to honestly pray and ask y'all, what are some areas we need to heal of um, this AR during also past AR with the counting of the Omer? How do I need to heal? We're also dropping into the chat more Kadasha Batya's um, faith-based coaching program. And um, also we dropped in both chats, the Great Awakening Interdisciplinary Team, where they have therapists, counselors, coaches, different ones that um, you can reach out to. You don't have to be a part of a Great Awakening Assembly. But again, when you're connecting with a counselor or therapist, you have to be honest about what you're going through because it can't just be that person's a Hebrew. Okay, they can help me get through PTSD. Um, I've learned that I am someone that has gone to counseling. I had to go as a child in foster care. And then as an adult, I chose to go and I still go. I still go to counseling. Um, I take very serious that if it says to love Yah with all our heart, soul, and mind, we have to take care of our minds the way we take care of our bodies. Because some of us were real particular about what we eat, but our mind is taking in all types of junk and we never do any um, care for our mind. So thank you to the woman of Yah. And now we are going to go into prayer. If that is okay, um, we are going to go into prayer. Prophetess Deborah Mickens Hawkins of Shining Light Temple of Faith is going to just pray for us. We are going to take Rosh Kodesh prayer requests. Please be mindful that this is live streaming on YouTube. We're not going to turn things on and off. So if you have a personal prayer request that you don't want said out loud, please email it to wellingwomenzion at gmail.com. And those emails will be forwarded to us by Maura Kadasha and myself, Prophetess Maura Kadasha and Minister Audrey Hawthorne from Bethel, the House of Yahweh. We will pray over the request throughout the month. Um, so please, if you don't, if you have a private request, we're going to ask that you just email it to us. It will not get lost. Um, and so um, um, thank you again, Pastor Renice. And now we are, and thank you to our moderators, Reagan and Kala on Zoom and Katia and Asheria on YouTube. We appreciate you. And if you're watching on, if you are watching on YouTube, please like and please share. This is a very important message to share with someone you love on your social media, not for clicks and likes and views, but that so someone who needs to heal, someone who might be getting abused that's on your friends list that you don't even know may watch this message and get their deliverance. So um, family, um, we're going to turn it over to you, Prophetess Deborah. And if you have Rosh Kodesh prayer requests, please put the prayer requests in the chat on YouTube or on Zoom, and we will get um, those requests to the whole team and Prophetess will pray over them. Thank you, Prophetess. This is the pastor of Shining Light Temple of Faith, a Messianic Hebrew Assembly in North Carolina, and she also has grown up in Torah. So I always joke she's been keeping Rosh Kodesh since the womb. Um, so thank you, Prophetess. It's always great to see you. Praise y'all. Same here. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. I just thank y'all, hallelujah, for all that have transpired this evening. And I tell you truly, the Ruah is working. 
within the body of Hamashia. I mean, the things that, um, and I just thank y'all for Pastor um, Persia, um, Renice, who brought forth such an awesome word and truly it was um, for such a time as this, praise y'all. And just to see what this month, you know, the coming, you know, as we've entered into this month and I have witnesses, one who's here within my house, probably here on Zoom, the very thing she was saying regarding, you know, healing that so many, of, you know, within the body of Mashia, you know, and even I can even attest early on, you know, how I, you know, needed healing and just going to going through the motions, praise God, and not fully delivered. And then even I was talking with someone even yesterday was saying about um, having like something where people would just come. And I says, we have to get out of also the mindset thinking that you could just come and pray. We're talking about years, different things that transpired through a lifetime of many who have gone through traumatic things in your life. Praise God. And just years of whatever trauma, dysfunctionist, dysfunctional things within, a, you know, marriage relationships, regard, you know, we have people who come into this way and just put things under the rug and y'all wants transparency. And we say that, you know, we're, we're free and we're not just as uh, you um, apostle was talking regarding of how, you know, our forefathers, Yashara, when coming out, that they still, you know, still had the um, mindset of, of bondage. And many of us are still in bondage. And just even as we were speaking, and I said, and when I say Christian mindset, that it's just not you come, pray, lay down, and you're delivered. It's a process. It, it's a process, and it hap doesn't happen overnight. I thank you, Pastor, for just bringing out these things. And even as you, um, Apostle, talking about getting, um, you know, counseling, it is important, doesn't have to be, you know, you, you, you need it because y'all, you know, he wants us to be whole and that's what Shalom is. And I believe it was even mentioned of even understanding what that is. And I just thank y'all because this is so prevalent and, and just hearing it and just how this, and even some things and, and, and I just, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to pray, but I just, really needs, you know, to even say this, praise y'all, that even releasing things that you feel like you haven't overcome, but also realize things that you think you've overcome. And this has happened even in this week as I was talking to different ones, that they thought that they were over in certain situations because we're going to be tested, we're going to be tried. You think that you're over and things trigger things where it brings things out that you for you know, thinking that, that that's not there. And you hear, and, I, and this is what I say, that certain hurts, praise God, it's gotta, you gotta put the work in, you gotta want it to, you, you gotta want it, you gotta be true, true to yourself. You know, and, and even as our, our theme was sincerity and truth, unleavened bread of sincerity, Sincerity and truth. Praise y'all. Being sincere, being true. Praise y'all. You know, time out for, you know, going as usual, suffering. And yeah, I'm all right. And you're not all right. Y'all doesn't, that's a lie. And, and y'all wants truth. As you said, being naked before him. Praise y'all. This is what y'all is pulling out of us. Hallelujah. And just as I was saying, if you got, if there's a wound, Praise y'all. And there's infection in that womb. Praise y'all. You don't just put a band-aid on it. Or even if you don't take, the body will tend to heal on the outside and you still got infection inside. It's got to be open. It's got to be dug out for the process of healing to begin. So it's going to hurt. It's going to, but you got to want it. You got to desire it. Because until then, we can talk that we're free. You know who the son said, free, I'm free indeed. And you are yet still in bondage. You are not free. You're not balanced. You are not, 
Praise Yah. And we know that everything works in a cycle. You're, I, it, it can't be in balance and, and in that cycle, you know, as Yah, that rhythm that all of creation is in. It, it cannot go in that rhythm if there is a things that's, you know, it's going just like they say a heart, like a heart murmur or something. In essence, it's not beating right because it's not right. Praise Yah. Yah wants us to be whole. So I thank Yah for the word. I thank him for what he's doing. Hallelujah. And if we just have to awake, hallelujah, hear and over, hallelujah. As it even been said, don't just hear, but listen and apply, just as the pastor said. Praise Yah. We speak words, but we Yah is calling for application. Praise Yah. That's what it's all about. Application. Hallelujah. Putting the word to work, that we can be living word walking, that we can truly be transformed, truly by the renewing of our mind, that our mind, as she has said, let this mind be in you. So I thank y'all for you. I thank y'all for what has transformed fire, the prophetic word, hallelujah, let us hear, let us obey, let us be true, praise God, and let us get healing, hallelujah, because there is work to do, and I love how it was also said, many are not converted, and that's what, hallelujah, Yeshua said to Peter, hallelujah, he said, when you are converted, strengthen your brother, hallelujah, your brethren, we can't strengthen no one because we need to be converted, it, truly converted and we got to be true we got to be naked truly transparent in every way hallelujah and that's how the work begins praise be his name we thank y'all hallelujah that we have entered into hallelujah this month of zen hallelujah and hallelujah this month of healing as we are in the count praise y'all Hallelujah. And even all that has been said, let us take it. And I'm grateful, praise God, that hallelujah, this is recorded. If you need to hear that word again, hear it again and hear it over again. Hallelujah. And go before Yah. Go into that word. It's just as even apostle said, hallelujah, if you're sure, if it's one area, hallelujah, find out, study on, on that one thing that you, hallelujah, let it become in, in your roar. Hallelujah, that you marinate on it and that you allow it to work in you, praise Yah, that we can even get the true filling, hallelujah, of what shall be us want to, you know, during that time, that we can get the full power of what Yah wants to give us in these last days, because we are in the last hour, and it's time out for foolishness, time out for playing, time out for Hallelujah, going as everything, praise Yah. Yah is calling for us to be real. Hallelujah, we have to know that he says that, hallelujah, judgment is first begin in the house of Yah. Hallelujah, let us be real, let us be true, and let us be diligent, hallelujah, and truly do the work and let Yah do the work in us that we can truly be vessels truly of honor used for the master's sake. Hallelujah. As we are here, praise Yah. Hallelujah. And on this, hallelujah, Rosh Kadesh. Hallelujah. And I know, hallelujah, that this is a time, hallelujah, when the heavens, the gates are open and Yah is nigh to our hallelujah to us. Praise Yah. And he hears, hallelujah, the petitions that go up before him. Hallelujah. And as the petitions go up, praise Yah that you have, hallelujah, bring before him in this time, praise Yah. He hears, hallelujah. And he said he'll answer, praise Yah. Hallelujah. So we thank Yah, hallelujah. We're going to pray, hallelujah. And whatever, hallelujah, petitions that you may have. And as apostle has spoken, praise Yah, those, hallelujah, who want it, to be spoken, hallelujah, at this time, we will, but or we'll just pray in general, and those, hallelujah, have petitions, hallelujah, that you don't want to be spoken outwardly, praise Yah, hallelujah, as this is, praise Yah, Rosh Kadesh, we will continue in the prayer, even as this night, hallelujah, as we are in this Rosh Kadesh, this new month, this new, this time of healing, Praise y'all, we're going to bring it, not only myself, but others. And we, I'm asking you to pray as well. Praise y'all. 
and ask Yah, hallelujah, for hallelujah, that which you desire of him. Praise be his name. Hallelujah. We thank Yah and we give him praise. Hallelujah. Let us go before the throne. Hallelujah. Eternal Father, Yah, we come before you right now with thanksgiving, lifting up your high and esteemed name. Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you. Hallelujah. For hallelujah, your loving kindness for truly in his better in life. Yah, we thank you. Hallelujah for loving us, for even correction, all that you do because you show forth that your love unto us, that you have not forsaken us. Though we have times, hallelujah, continuously, hallelujah, forsaken and gone against your Kadesh will. But Father, we thank you. Hallelujah for loving us in spite of. We thank Thank you for the shed blood of our Mashiach, our high priest, Yeshua Mashiach, who died, hallelujah, hallelujah, and even was, hallelujah, who went before us and even bore our sins, bore, hallelujah, he who was without sin, hallelujah, bore our sins, and blood was shed, hallelujah, for, hallelujah, that we may have this right, hallelujah, to this tree of life, where we can boldly come before your throne. So, Father, as we come, and even as a Mashiach, the scripture declare, who sits on the right hand of you, interceding on our behalf. We bring before you the petitions. Hallelujah. We're thankful that you have allowed us to enter into the second month. Hallelujah. Of this year, Father. And as we are in the hallelujah, the count of the Omar, as we hallelujah, continually examining and doing introspection, hallelujah, within ourselves, we ask you, Father, that you will shine the light of you father in us show us every area father that we need to come up in father we come before you with repentant hearts father asking that you forgive us of all sins all transgressions all the things we thought done imagine even the things hallelujah that we held back that not being true hallelujah praise Yah. father we just thank you we ask you father that you father will have your way Father, and as we come before you, we ask that you cleanse us and purge us. Hallelujah. Wash us thoroughly as we, hallelujah, with his up and we shall be clean. Hallelujah. We ask that you continue to create in us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us, Father. Hallelujah. We ask that you teach us how to pray, what to pray for, increase our faith, Father. Give us more wisdom, more knowledge, and a better understanding of your will and way. Yeah. I believe, hallelujah, we come before you. All those, Father, even the words that were spoken, we ask that you, Father, the virtue, hallelujah, the words that have gone forth by your, hallelujah, your, hallelujah, vessels. Father, we ask that you, hallelujah, even at this time that you, hallelujah, read, hallelujah, that you will, hallelujah, hallelujah, build them back up, Father, and that you will, hallelujah, restore your virtue unto them as they have poured out, Father. Hallelujah, that you will continue to build up. Hallelujah, Pastor Ranice Gurley, Father, have your way within her, Father. Continue to use her, hallelujah, for your esteem, Father, as she goes forth, hallelujah, in the power of your might, that you will continue to, hallelujah, continue to build her up, hallelujah, and give her, hallelujah, even, hallelujah, a greater portion of your rule, our Father. Hallelujah, we thank you, hallelujah, for our apostle, only the Father, for the vision that you have given unto her, even directing of who should speak, and even, hallelujah, being consistent, being, hallelujah, diligent to the call that you have sent, hallelujah, Messiah to her father, that you will continue to build her up, strengthen her father. Hallelujah. And all those, hallelujah who have been consistent, Father, in this services, hallelujah. Everyone who have taken part, those who blew the trumpets, hallelujah. The shofar to say, hallelujah, Brother Hazel, and hallelujah, and hallelujah, and hallelujah, and Brother Barnes, hallelujah, and even hallelujah, hallelujah, and prophet, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Adewami, Father, continue to bless him, strengthen him, 
hallelujah, even build up, hallelujah, strengthen and renew, hallelujah, the virtue within him as he continues to pour out and be the servant to just, hallelujah, doing that which you have called him, hallelujah, to build up Yasharel, hallelujah, just what you do within him, hallelujah, sister Latanya, father, even as she ministers, hallelujah, bless her and hallelujah, Malcolm, hallelujah, in their home and ministry and every ministry represented here, hallelujah. Sister Kadasha and hallelujah, lost time, your father, hallelujah, hallelujah, all those, hallelujah, who is even a part, hallelujah, of the hallelujah, this ministries, hallelujah, and even hallelujah, doctor, Lord, and hallelujah, there, hallelujah, them in every ministry, all hallelujah, prevailing, hallelujah, just father, you know all, hallelujah, that your will will be done continuously, hallelujah, that we will continue to show forth the love of you, father. Hallelujah, that all will know that we are your Thomas Hallelujah, your taught ones, Father, because we show forth the love one to another. Hallelujah, and even as we are healing, hallelujah, that the love will even be prevail, even the more, Father. Hallelujah, we just thank you, Father. We give you praise. Hallelujah, and as we bring, hallelujah, these petitions before you, and even those, hallelujah, who may not be written, thou who knoweth all things, things, for we know you know the very intents of every heart. You know every desire. You know all things. Nothing is hidden from you, Father. Hallelujah. We ask that you, Father, according to your holy righteousness, according to your will, that you will answer. Hallelujah. We bring before you, Kathia, hallelujah. Kathia, hallelujah, asking for healing of a sore throat and head cold. Father, we ask that you send your healing virtue. Hallelujah. Heal, hallelujah, your Hallelujah. Go within that you remove all infirmity, everything, hallelujah, congestion, whatever it be, to the core that it be removed right now in the name of him. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. You give her hallelujah. Clarity, hallelujah. Clearness in her head, in her hallelujah. The hallelujah congest. Hallelujah. The sign, hallelujah, sinuses and whatever. Hallelujah. It may be, Father. We thank you and we hallelujah and give you the praise for our healing right now. Hallelujah. We ask for prayer for, for hallelujah, travailing family fellowship. Hallelujah. Walker it. Hallelujah. And Woodard and hallelujah. The Williams family, all these families. Hallelujah. And their search for the purchased land. Father, you we know that you have already have it set and assigned, Father. Hallelujah. We pray, Father, that you will reveal it unto them. Hallelujah. That they're able to purchase. Hallelujah. For your esteem father for your kingdom father hallelujah that you will hallelujah go before them and give them that which is hallelujah you have already assigned that is for them father that they would hallelujah be able to purchase hallelujah and hallelujah and that in, in all of it that you father will hallelujah will get all the esteem because even how it all work out it is only you that no one can get the esteem but you of how and even hallelujah transpires in every area we thank you father and we're believing it's hallelujah that it's going to come into fruition hallelujah soon hallelujah we thank you but even in your timing but we trust you father have your way in then even even their ministry, hallelujah, and every hallelujah, and all the families represented, hallelujah, we bring before you Cheryl Blue, hallelujah, asking for spiritual direction, Father, in ministry, hallelujah, as a leader, Father, hallelujah, hallelujah, we know that what you have called, hallelujah, you have already, hallelujah, predestined, hallelujah, you have already, hallelujah, know, Father, that you will, hallelujah, give her the direction as, hallelujah, she seek you, Father, hallelujah, trusting you with a whole heart, leaning not to our own understanding, but in all ways, acknowledging you, hallelujah, and allowing you to direct her path, that she 
she will stay focused and hallelujah, truly walk by faith and not by sight as she continue to hallelujah, hallelujah, diligently seek you, Father, as you lead her and direct her, hallelujah, in that, hallelujah, would you have called and ordained for her for even such a time as this, hallelujah, and that you will, hallelujah, she's asking for effortness in reaching the lost, Father, hallelujah, that you will, hallelujah, work within her, Father, according to how you do it, Father. Hallelujah. Praise be your name. Hallelujah. Sometimes we want it a certain way, but how you do it, Father. Hallelujah. Let your will be done, how you direct it. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on this earth. We thank you. We trust you right now, Father. In Yeshua's name, we pray. Hallelujah. We bring before you a sharia, sister sharia for complete healing emotionally and mentally, Father. Hallelujah. Even that which you have begun, Father, that she will continue, hallelujah, to release and truly, hallelujah, be transparent. And then, Father, as, hallelujah, you are showing up, hallelujah, and, and bringing deliverance and even how she made whatever she needs to do to get the complete healing, that she will follow the directions, how you lead, Father. Hallelujah. But we know that you are a healer. You are a deliverer. Hallelujah. And that even in the process that she not give up in any area or just feel like it's you, said, but just continue to look unto you, Yeshua. Thou who art the author and the finisher of the faith, of her faith, that she could, as we all continue to lay aside every sin and the weight that so easily beset us as we stay on this race, how you stay on this path that you have set as we gain the patience and knowing that the trials, tribulations, and circumstances and persecutions or whatever we have to endure, Father, knowing that it is working for our good. Hallelujah. That in every area, hallelujah, but to stay focused on you, Yah. Hallelujah. On you, Yeshua, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So as she, hallelujah, desires the complete healing, hallelujah, that you will continue to work on her, work within her, Father. Hallelujah. And lead her and direct her. Hallelujah. In every area that she will be truly whole in you. We thank you, Father. And as hallelujah, the prayer for Pastor Ranice, hallelujah, Kirkland, hallelujah, we continue to bring her before you, Father, as we said, Father, as you, hallelujah, continue to pour in her as she pour out, hallelujah, that which you put in her and that you will continue to build her up and give her, hallelujah, the restore her virtue and just even endow her with even greater power, even greater, hallelujah, no hallelujah, endurance in a hallelujah, greater, even a greater anointing. Oh, yeah, Saya, Yashira, my yeah, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah, brother, hallelujah. Hallelujah, the underwami, Father. We know, hallelujah, even that what you're doing in him, that you will continue to build him up, Father. Hallelujah, that he may continue to do, hallelujah, hallelujah, that work which you have set before him, hallelujah, that he not, hallelujah, hallelujah, just continue on, hallelujah, be the consistent as he is, hallelujah, and even greater anointing even within him, Father, hallelujah, as you continue to be built, hallelujah, and building him up in your people, Father, Gideon Laxon, Father, hallelujah, we pray, hallelujah, for a complete life reset. Hallelujah, whatever it is, reset. Hallelujah, whatever, Father, you know. You know what, hallelujah, when they, hallelujah, the reset, you know what he stands in need of. You know the direction he needs to be in for you made him, hallelujah, from the foundation of the earth, Father, before, hallelujah, he was created. You had already formed him and you have already designed and purposed. Hallelujah, his call and what he is to do. Father, that he will fulfill the purpose, the call that you have in his life. Father, right now, we claim his life. We claim him in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. We bring hallelujah to a covenant in the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. That he may walk in the way of you, Father. Hallelujah. We continue to hallelujah and pray for hallelujah. Pastor, hallelujah. Dr. Laws, hallelujah. In the assembly, Beth Ephraim. Father, that you will continue to build him up. 
up and that you will continue to strengthen. Hallelujah, Dr. Lord, Sergeant of both, Dr. Hallelujah, 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 Lord, and his wife, the Hallelujah, Sandra, Lord. Father, that you will, Hallelujah, continue to build them, strengthen them. Hallelujah, and even, Hallelujah, even restore greater within them, Father. Hallelujah, as you said, Hallelujah, even the latter rain, Hallelujah, greater anointing within them, Hallelujah, as he continue to teach. Hallelujah, that you will continue to build them up, that even the latter would be greater than the former. Oh, yeah, Messiah, yeah, sure. These things, hallelujah, we claim it, we believe it, and we're trusting and knowing that you are doing it. Hallelujah, for your esteem, Father, for it's all about you, all about the kingdom of your, hallelujah, the kingdom of your. Father, have your way, we ask thee. Hallelujah, whatever, hallelujah, may fail to advance, thou who know it, we commit all things in your hand. How you have your way, we pray thee, and we will continue to give you the praise, give you all the esteem, all that, hallelujah, unto your name. We give it unto you, Father, for you are worthy. Hallelujah, in the name of Yeshua, we pray and we believe it to be so. Hallelujah, we ask that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart that would be acceptable in your sight for you are our strength and our redeemer in your shortest name we pray hallelujah amen hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank, thank you so much prophetess, for that powerful hallelujah. prayer and anyone who's emailed us prayer requests the whole prayer team will be praying for you this month we thank everyone who shared their request thank you prophetess for praying with us and for us month in and month out please keep prophetess in your prayers and if you're looking for a place to fellowship in the fayetteville north carolina area check out shining light temple of faith we're dropping those links in the chat or they've already been dropped and also so into prophetess at um yah's own at cash up thank you prophetess so so much and thank you for the exhortation you also gave us as well thank you so so much and so family we um do we are wrapping up but we never want to just assume we never want to assume that everybody on here has been reconciled to yahweh whom the world calls god the god of abraham isaac and jacob if you've been listening tonight, yes, the theme of IR Ziv is healing, but the start of healing is being reconciled to Yahweh, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that is made possible through the life, death, and resurrection of Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. So we're gonna invite anyone who's listening on Zoom, who's listening on YouTube, who would be listening to the replay if you um, have not been reconciled to the most high god if you have not um been made your relationship with him right if you are a genetic hebrew who wants to return to the covenant made with abraham isaac and jacob or if you are not a genetic hebrew but you want to cleave to the children of israel we're inviting you now to just if you're on zoom you can raise your hand you can put in the chat i would like to pray or you can unmute and say your name and you will and that you would like to pray and also for those on youtube and hold on a minute family i just have to get my youtube device because we don't want to leave out the family on youtube for those who are on youtube just say i would like to pray in the chat and so if there is anyone who this AR, you want to start this month getting right with the Most High. If you've strayed or backslid and you want to rededicate yourself, you want to return to the covenant, we're just asking right now that you just raise your hand or unmute or in one of the chats say, I would like to pray. And for, for those who are will listen to the replay, we will say the we will say a prayer that you can repeat after me but say your own words and be sincere if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and so father yah father yahweh i come to you in the name of yahshua i come to you confessing to you that myself and my ancestors we have sinned against you we have committed idolatry. We have broken the covenant. We have not even kept the covenant in some cases. 
And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Fill me with the Ruach HaKodesh. Return me to the covenant you made with my ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or graft me into the children of Israel. Graft me into the covenant you made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I renounce all idolatry. I renounce all the works of Hasatan, of the devil. I renounce any um, sin and iniquity that is not of you. And I ask you to redeem me, to fill me with your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, to reconnect me to you and to help me become a, a child of Yah, to help me to heal. I confess to you my sins and the sins of my ancestors. I confess to you my iniquities and the iniquities of my ancestors. And I ask you, Abba Yahweh, to forgive me. I come to you in the name, righteousness, and authority of Yahshua. I confess that Yahshua is the Messiah and I accept him into my life. And I accept you, Yah, into my life. And Yah, I just ask for your forgiveness and for your healing. In Yahshua's name, we pray to you, Yahweh. Amen. If you said that prayer with us, you are in the kingdom of Yah. You are well, not the physical kingdom, but you are in Yah's family. You are born again. You are a part of the covenant that he made with your ancestors. Or even if you are not a Hebrew, you are now a part of the commonwealth of Israel of the covenant. And so we ask that you email us at info at propheticworldwind.com or wailingwomenzion at gmail.com and we will get you information on how to get a free good bible we will get you some information about scriptures to read for your journey some videos that you can watch for your journey and if you tell us the country you're in in this or the city and state if you're in america we will try to connect you to a safe body of believers who can immerse you if we know of a safe body and so the if you said that prayer the melokim the angels are rejoicing and we rejoice with you and know that yah is with you um as you return to his covenant we and so we really thank yah for all of you and thank you ima for being with us and so if you said that prayer, please be in touch with us at info at propheticworldwind.com or wailingwomenzion at gmail.com because we want to rejoice with you. The beginning of all healing starts with our relationship with Yah. And I'm just making sure those emails are in the, the YouTube chat. And so thank you everyone for being with us tonight. Happy new month, happy month of Ziv. Happy month of AR. I want to give a special shout out to everyone who stepped up to be a moderator, a Sharia Bat Ya of Strong Tower Akuti Care, my sister Kathia Lagur, my Haitian sister from ATL. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you, Kala. Um, Reagan is my sister, and Kala is, has taught on this platform before. She is um, a part of Kingdom Kai with Kabad Ya. Thank you for everyone who led and prayed and shared. We truly pray all you poured out will be poured back into you. We're just going to give some quick announcements. And then Prophetess Deborah, if you could give us a closing prayer and the Aaronic benediction, we would appreciate it. So if you want to join Biblical Man Cave, and this is for men and women, to pray the prayer watches. There were prayer watches that the Levites prayed you every other Friday at 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. and 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time there are there is a prayer watch prayer co-sponsored by biblical sponsored by biblical man cave Moray Malcolm Omari White he is the husband of Latanya White who sung Men and women are welcome to join. Just email biblicalmancave at gmail.com. These are the hours of the prayer watch where the most spiritual warfare takes place. And Maury Malcolm can tell you more about that. Um, so join in and press in. Also, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Wailing Women Prayer. Please sign up on the Prophetic Whirlwind website. If you have signed up, make sure info at Prophetic Whirlwind is on your safe list. If you're not getting weekly emails from us, check your junk, spam, or promo folders. We appreciate more Kadasha Bat Yah 
for constantly keeping us updated with the emails. So please make sure you're getting them because we also share about other Shabbat services and feast observances and teachings and things on those emails. But we will be praying this Thursday at 8 p.m. and Prophetess will be with us again. And then also, as we're going through all these feasts, we do have our own independent Hebraic greeting card company called Shalom Shalom Greeting Cards, founded by one of our dear sisters, Shannon. You can go to that website and use that code. And the, these are our own cards for all the feasts with the Hebrew sacred names, and a portion of the proceeds goes back into our communities. And then finally, please connect with Prophetic Whirlwind. Follow us on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, and also send us an email if you have any questions. And we um, do want to just ask you to save the date for Shavuot Travailing Family Fellowship and Prophetic Whirlwind Ministries will be gathering for um, Shavuot. Um, which starts sundown June 4th to sundown June 5th in Northern New Jersey. I want to thank Travailing Family Fellowship for co-hosting Passover together and for all the work and the hospitality. We will be hosting Shavuot together on in person um, with limited space and um, will live stream. And thank you to every, every person who joined us during Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread in person and online. And so with that, we are going to ask, we want to thank, one, I want to just thank each and every person who's been here with us and blessings to you. And remember that healing is the children's bread. So lean into getting your healing, this AR, this Ziv. And so we are going to just close in a prayer and a blessing by Prophetess Deborah. I love y'all with the love of Yahshua. Remember, we are all trying to work this out to heal. And we are all trying to get to Zion, healed and whole. So Prophetess, I turn it to, to you. Praise God, praise God. Truly thank y'all for all that has been done and said. And praise God, I love you all as well, praise God. Eternal Father, Yah, we come again before you with thanksgiving. We just thank you, Father, for just your loving kindness and your tender mercy, just being who you are and whom you are to each and every one of us, how you continue to show yourself mighty among us, Father. Hallelujah, for truly you are top. Father, we just thank you, hallelujah, for that which have transpired on this evening, how you, Father, have been it. We thank you for your very presence, your Ruah HaKadosh in our presence this evening and all that has been done and said and even that which was rendered up father we pray that it was as a sweet smelling aroma unto your nostril we thank you father for every hallelujah each as we are all here father that you will continue to bless each and every one every ministry every home every individual father those that who are on the line those who are desired and may not have been Father, we just ask that you bless all your blessed temples and those that don't know you, that you, hallelujah, that they may come to know you, that you will awake and remove the scales from their eyes and unstop their ears, Father, hallelujah, and that you will break up the folly ground. But Father, we thank you, hallelujah, as we believe we're all in the process of healing, that you will continue to heal, deliver, and truly set free, hallelujah, that we can truly claim the victory, hallelujah and truly with all assurance know that with the who the sun set free we are truly indeed free that we will know that we are truly converted in every way that we may hallelujah continue to be able to strengthen our brothering and even be a light unto this dark world that we will let our light so shine before men that they will esteem you father which is in the shimeans and even as you will hallelujah we pray that you will continue to fill us with all hallelujah your esteem that you will continue to build us up to be all that you desire each and every one of us to be in you father hallelujah knowing that we are the extensions hallelujah of you hamashiach hallelujah to hallelujah to be you to show forth you you called us you said yes we are mighty ones and we are all hallelujah only in you to show forth you father the power of you 
in, hallelujah, this world, hallelujah, and for such a time as this, that you, Father, hallelujah, will, hallelujah, hallelujah, be esteemed in this earth, Father, hallelujah. We just thank you, Father, and we continue to give you praise, hallelujah, and continue to look to you, for we know all our help coming from thee, and we will continue to give you the praise that's due unto your name, in Yahushua's name we pray, hallelujah. And Yah spake unto Moshe, saying, speak unto Aharon and unto his son, saying on this wise, ye shall barak the children of Yasharel, saying unto them, Yahuwah barak thee and keep thee. Yahuwah make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee his shalom, the completeness only in you, Father. And they shall put Hallelujah, my name, Yahuwah, upon the children of Yasharel, and I, Yahuwah, will barack them. Hallelujah, Yahweh, bless you all. Hallelujah, may his face continue, may he continue to have his way in each and every one of our lives. Hallelujah, Yahweh, bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lela Tov. Hallelujah. Lela Tov. Thank you, Prophetess. And happy Lala new year. Come on. And happy hallelujah. Rosh Kadesh to all. Praise God. Praise God.